Hello everybody, uh, I'm Dr. Fatma Muhammad Saeed, I'm a lecturer of Indodontics at the Faculty of Dentistry, Cairo University. I'm gonna be with you this year uh, in the Indodontic uh, curriculum, inshallah, and hope you enjoy our lectures. The lecture today is about bleaching. A lot of people nowadays are asking about bleaching. I just want a lighter shade, I want a uh, bright teeth, I want uh, uh, a white smile. So we must differentiate between uh, two terms actually, a teeth whitening and a tooth bleaching. What's the teeth whitening? A teeth whitening is removing the surface stains to restore the teeth original or natural shade. Actually, I do not uh, uh, um, affect the uh, actual or the natural shade of the tooth. It's done either uh, by uh, scaling and polishing, resurfacing, but I uh, restore the tooth to its natural shade by removing the stains. On the other, uh, on the contrary, tooth bleaching uh, actually refers to a term where I change the original shade of the tooth to a lighter one. I lighten the color of the tooth through a chemical agent that is applied uh, on the tooth or inside it and change the natural color of the tooth to a lighter shade. So teeth whitening differs from tooth bleaching. Our talk today is about bleaching. Before knowing uh, uh, the mechanism of the bleaching and the bleaching agents, we need to know the cause or the etiology of the stains we want to fight. The cause or the etiology of the stains you want to fight. You must know your enemy so you can fight it. Okay, the etiology of stains actually is composed of two uh, things or two categories. The first is the natural or the acquired uh, stain. This type of uh, stains, the patient usually um, acquired from drinking, from food, or it's natural built in the tooth due to uh, different uh, factors we're gonna discuss. The other uh, cause is the iatrogenic. The iatrogenic cause means that there is uh, a defect, a problem done by the dentist or something related to dentistry, either the materials we use or the techniques. So again, the etiology of uh, discoloration is either natural acquired, the dentist or dentistry is, has no hand in it, or an iatrogenic cause where dentistry or the dentist is the cause of this uh, uh, a discoloration or defect. Okay, now, how does bleaching agents work? Actually, bleaching agents or chemical agents undergoes chemical reaction releasing hydroxyl radicals, free radicals. These radicals attacks the uh, uh, stain molecules. It attacks the bond between the stain molecules, breaking the bond. When you break the bond between the large stain molecules, it changes into small colorless molecules, white, small, colorless molecules that can uh, 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 ref uh, reflect the uh, light and then you cannot see the stain anymore. So how does this bleaching agent works? The bleaching agents, they uh, form uh, radicals, hydroxyl uh, radicals that attacks the large stain molecules, breaking the bonds between the molecules, rendering them small white colorless molecules and the stain just goes away. It's all a chemical a reaction and a chemical phenomenon. Etiology of discoloration. First we're going to discuss the natural or the acquired causes of discoloration. The first one is the pulp necrosis, the second one is the intrapulpal hemorrhage. Well I think these two causes may relate to each other, the same cause mainly. Pulpal necrosis will lead to uh, 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 formation of uh, necrotic uh, tissue. This necrotic tissue will uh, penetrate the dentinal tubules. 
causes staining of all the surrounding dentine. Actually, uh, these necrotic uh, tissues may include sulfides, iron sulfides, uh, some um, uh, disintegration products of the lysis of the RBCs. At the end, all of them penetrate the dentinal tubules, causing darkening of the tooth. So here the pulp is necrotic, the discoloration is deep inside the dentinal tubules. So if I want to a bleach this type of uh, of this cause. If you want to bleach a bleach tooth uh, that have pulp necrosis, I have to bleach it internally. And now we're gonna differentiate between these two types of bleaching: an internal bleaching and an external bleaching. An internal bleaching means I'm gonna put the uh, bleaching agent inside the tooth, so the pulp had to be necrotic. I cannot internally bleach a vital tooth okay for sure internal bleaching bleach is more inside the tooth it's more effective so it's used for cases such as pulp necrosis the pulp is already necrotic and pulp chamber is present so so i can put uh, uh, the uh, bleaching agent inside the tooth on the contrary the external bleaching i only apply the bleaching agent on the surface of the tooth. I cannot put it inside the tooth. So the tooth must be vital. I cannot uh, 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 use internal bleaching for a vital tooth. I can use external bleaching for a vital tooth. Also, a non-vital tooth can be uh, bleached both internally and externally. There are two uh, possibilities available for me according to the degree of uh, the discoloration. The second cause is the intrapulpal hemorrhage. Intrapulpal hemorrhage uh, usually occurs as a result of trauma, as a result of impact injury to the tooth, causing disruption of the blood vessels with the release of RBCs, which are lysed to produce iron sulfides. Iron sulfides are dark in color. That increases in time and penetrates the dentinal tubules causing staining of all the surrounding dentine. So what differentiates intrapulpal hemorrhage from pulp necrosis? Actually, if intrapulpal hemorrhage was massive, it will lead to pulp necrosis. But in some cases, when it is mild, it can be reversible. The tooth can uh, recover from this hemorrhage if it is very mild. Then we come to the calcific metamorphosis. It's another uh, cause of discoloration that happens due to trauma. Well, trauma causes excessive formation of irregular dentine or irregular secondary dentine, as trauma causes destruction of the odontoplast. With disruption of the blood supply, this leads to the formation of irregular dentine and the tooth decreases in this uh, translucency or become yellowish and darker in color. Another cause are developmental defects. Developmental defects may occur as a result of fluorosis, systemic drug intake during tooth formation, or enamel hypoplasia. As for fluorosis, fluorosis means increased uptake of fluoride more than one part per million. It occurs mainly in populations that depend on water coming from wells. Um, what happens when uh, fluoride increases? Actually, this will produce defect in the mineralized structures of the tooth, partially in the enamel matrix, which results in hypoplasia. The tooth becomes chalky white with poorer surface that will sure attract stains. This type of uh, defect or discoloration is better bleached externally. The tooth is vital, no need for uh, internal bleaching. I, I cannot intentionally do endodontic treatment just to bleach the tooth, except if the defect actually led to caries, which was deep bleaching the pulp. Unless this is the case, and it's only surface discoloration, I will go for external bleaching. The second type is the systemic drugs. Some drugs when ingested during the formation uh, of the tooth may lead to banding of the tooth, such as the tetracycline antibiotic. It's well known, especially when mothers 
pregnant mothers uh, take tetracycline. Uh, sometimes it is precipitated in the uh, fetus or uh, the kid's uh, teeth, uh, forming banding. The discoloration will range from yellow to brown to dark gray, according to the amount of the drug taken and the frequency of drug intake and the age of the patient. Some uh, uh, children take this tetracycline in their early years, uh, which also become incorporated into the developing, developing teeth, leading to a uh, discoloration. This type of discoloration can be bleached either externally if it is mild. However, it's very if it is very severe, I would go for an internal bleaching. And this requires, of course, doing root canal treatment. The third type is that enamel hypoplasia. It appears usually as a brownish or whitish area on the labial aspect of the crown. And it differs from hypo classification. In normal hypoplasia, there is a defect in uh, 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 the organic uh, structure of the tooth. Unlike the calcification, the enamel becomes defective, pores, and can take up stains easily from the oral cavity. Depending on the severity of the hypoplasia, I may determine if this tooth needs to be internally bleached, it would require root canal treatment and internally bleach, or it can be only externally bleached. Well, another cause is the blood dyscrasias, which uh, happens in primary teeth uh, due to a hemolytic anemia called erythroplastosis fetalis. What happens is the child has uh, a different uh, RH uh, uh, type rather than the mother. There is an incompatible RH leading to some of the mother's blood enter the circulatory system of uh, the fetus, uh, causing lysis of the erythrocytes with the release of hemosiderin that causes staining of dentine. Actually, and unfortunately, this type of discoloration cannot be corrected by bleaching. The last type uh, in the natural or acquired causes are the chronological hypoplegia. It occurs as a result of high fever uh, during tooth formation. This high fever leads to temporary disruption in the enamel formation, results in a band in the enamel, banding in the enamel. And also this is uh, not, uh, cannot be corrected by bleaching. Here we come to the second group of uh, the etiology of discoloration or the causes of discoloration, which is the iatrogenic group. Actually, it's due to iatrogenic dental procedures and somehow it can be uh, preventable. The first uh, uh, type is the root canal treatment related, some factors related to the root canal treatment. The other one is related to the restoration after the root canal treatment. Regarding the procedures that's concerned with the root canal treatment can be incomplete pulp removal. Incomplete pulp removal, leaving residues of the pulp uh, in the pulp chamber, it works just like necrotic pulp we discussed before. These uh, materials become disintegrated, releasing uh, dark uh, stains that enters the dentinal tubules leading to discoloration. The uh, other uh, cause is excess obturation material. Usually, after we finish endontic treatment, we stress so much over removing every, every, every extra or excess material inside the pulp chamber. Leaving these materials may cause with time discoloration as they leak and enter the dentinal tubules causing discoloration. So how can I prevent this? First of all, I must clean my cavity totally from any excess material, sealers, obturating material, uh, uh, old restoration, temporary filling, anything, anything. I must uh, uh, clean my cavity. And nowadays they use even uh, ultrasonic devices to completely clean uh, uh, cavities. Uh, the second, I may lower my filling into the orifice one or two millimeter 
below the level of the orifice to be sure that uh, I don't have any excess obturating material in uh, the pulp chamber. The third type is due to intracanal medications. Some intracanal medications when left for a long, long time inside the uh, canal may leak uh, this coloration molecules that enter the dentinal tubules causing this coloration. Now we come to the restoration related factors. The first is the large metallic fillings. As we all know, the amalgam restorations, they are made of metal and mercury. They tend to uh, corrode and uh, form corrosion products. These products enter the dentinal tubules causing discoloration and sometimes also cause discoloration uh, of the soft tissue surrounding the tooth. It's very, very, very uh, dark and uh, have a high discoloration uh, uh, potential. Uh, this type of discoloration actually is very difficult in bleaching. It needs more than one session due to uh, the shade and the nature of the uh, ions bleached from the restoration. The other type is uh, the composite discoloration, which occurs due to micro leakage. Micro leakage cause uh, uh, defects in the composite, acquires uh, stains, and become discolored. It can be discolored on the surface only. It can be discolored on the border between uh, the tooth and uh, uh, the restoration on the margin, or it can be bulk discolored. Well, overall, most of the uh, composite uh, discolorations requires total restoration change. So what about bleaching agents? How I'm gonna bleach the tooth? What are the materials used to bleach the tooth and their chemical composition that allows me to bleach the tooth and lighten its color? The first type is the hydrogen peroxide, then the sodium perforate and the carbamide peroxide. As for hydrogen peroxide, it is the most widely used, especially in uh, clinics. Uh, it's uh, usually found in um, 30 to 35 uh, percent uh, formula, which is called superoxol. It's a very, very powerful oxidizer. However, this uh, makes it unstable, should be handled with a lot of care as it may explode. It must be kept always in a door container. Also, it is highly, highly toxic to soft tissues, so protecting soft tissues is of major importance when using hydrogen peroxide as a bleaching agent. We're going to talk later about how to protect the tooth and uh, the damages that may occur uh, due to improper use of hydrogen peroxide. The second one is the sodium perchlorate. It comes in uh, a powder form. It's more stable than hydrogen uh, peroxide when uh, dry. When mix it, it, uh, mixing it with water, it uh, decomposes to form sodium metaporate, hydrogen peroxide also, and nascent oxygen. As we said, it is safer than hydrogen peroxide, but hydrogen peroxide is more effective. But sodium perchlorate, maybe it's more easily controlled and safer. The last one is the carbamide peroxide. It's uh, formed of uh, urea hydrogen peroxide with a percentage from 3 to 15 percent. It can cause damage to teeth and the surrounding mucosa. Not the best option uh, around here. And also it may affect the bond strength of the composite and the marginal seal. So also we are going to talk later about how to get rid of the disadvantages of these materials or its techniques to obtain the optimum uh, bleaching for the patient. Thank you. That's all for uh, today. Hope uh, you liked the lecture uh, and see you in the next session, inshallah.